Hello, my name is Courtney Ka. I'm a comedian and I'm a stroke survivor. I was born in Gary, Indiana, and my mom thought she would name me something to give me a head start, something British, there in Gary, Indiana. So they named me Charlotte Alberta. And when I grew up, my boss called me Charlotte the Harlot. But while I was still a baby, my grandma was like, we're gonna call you Chief. I like that name. You're the wisest baby I ever met. You give everybody advice, whether they want it or not. Mm -hmm. and, and at the time when I was a baby, when they sold, when they, when you had insurance, different products, you had a lot more door-to-door -door salesmen It's coming up when I was a baby in the 50s. So this, our insurance salesman came by every month to pick up the premium. And I kind of knew him. And so he was always singing Elvis Presley songs. I remember that. So I remember one time he came and he didn't knock on the door or something. I don't remember what made me say this. But he walked in the house and he was looking around. And my grandmother was coming out of the kitchen and she was wiping flour off her hands. And I turned and looked at him like I was like the guard dog or something. I was like, Mister, you ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> She laughed and she was like, girl, you are so grown. Get out of here. <laughs> that was the first time I knew I could make people laugh because she laughed and he laughed. <laughs> so what brought you out to LA? I came to LA because I was a Pilates teacher and a personal trainer. And as I said, I, I consider myself a brainiac, really smart. So I thought I'll go to LA and I'll hook up with the people that teach Pilates and I will help to train teachers. And then that didn't work out at all. I got into comedy roughly 98, 99, somewhere 2002, some, sometime between 1998 and 2003. That's when I got into comedy. I can't put it, pin it down any more closely than that because I think I was dabbling with it a little bit and I had two or three people that were actually teaching me and then they didn't teach very well so I moved to somebody else and so I don't count those years because that was like being in the Bermuda Triangle or something. So when was your first live performance? Do you remember when you did a first stand-up routine in front of people? This guy Dave McNary at the Ice House used to hold auditions on Saturdays and it was maybe three years into doing comedy. I'd had two teachers, and then I think I, at that point I found Bobby Oliver, and I really liked her way of you know, making you write the joke and letting you craft it, and then just giving you input. Maybe use this word, or remember to give a pause just before you deliver the funny part. And so Dave McNary sometime early 2000 was my first show at the ice house mm -hmm. and i was able to invite and bring 10 people because that's how many you had to bring to so do a who, show who is the most influential person to you as a child my mother's mother my grandmother i think she had like people talk about their third eye and have an insight i think she did because she'd know a little bit about something about somebody and she could give you enough information about them that if she wanted to, she could tell you how, how to deal with these people because they had this happen as a kid and they brought it into adulthood and they don't mean to be mean, but that's happened to them as a kid. So you got to be more open and let God fill your heart for them. And she gave me a good picture of God, but she also gave me a good picture of us as women, how we had a lot of power because she said women are naturally intuitive. And I took a, a page from her. I took a page from her that when you when you look at people and you talk to them and you look them eyeball to eyeball, if you if you allow it, God will let your third eye open right then and give you some insight about what's going on with that person. And then you could make some good choices. Do I befriend this person? They're gonna be a lot of problems, or do I just step out of their way and let them go their way and I look for people a lot more compatible to me right here and now. So she gave me that kind of information and insight even into myself. So mm. I thought that was pretty cool because I had a choice. I could be friends with difficult people or not. I knew I had hypertension and I was on medication and apparently it was not enough because one day I was at work in Calabasas teaching Pilates and the aneurysm that could have been a problem became a problem, only I didn't know that was it was going on. But it burst in my head and I started to bleed 
out. So I stood up and passed out flat face down. And the interesting thing is I should have broke facial bones because I hit my face first. Not even an ache in the neck. I felt like I was cushioned by love when I fell because I don't remember any of that. I had no pain as far as physical pain and just horror at the fact that how come I didn't. Mm. And then when I came out of it, I was just, I knew God and I had an experience talking to him and getting closer to him. And, and he was such a love button. And I was like, oh my God, what a cool being. And just before I stepped out, I mean, I talk to him now, but not as well much as I did then. And I, I told him, I said, my major wish is to always be this close to you, God. And not let anything get in between anxiety, all my little crazy fears, my doubts and disbelief about myself or anything. I want none of that to step in our way. And it's been beautiful. I mean, like if I do something that I think is stupid and I confess it, God doesn't give me a beat down. You know what he does? He'll answer a prayer that I've been praying about something else. Like almost as if to say, it's okay, little girl. And I feel like I'm two again and God is my friend. And I don't feel, you know, like blasted. Or, or, or made to feel like you're stupid. I made, I'm made to feel like here, here's a little cherry candy with, in the way of a, a check being delivered and my bank account being back in the black or a bill getting paid or money coming in and I got money to go do comedy or people coming to my show. He'll always answer a prayer in response to me confessing some f shortfall, or anxiety filled thing that I feel is holding me back. And he never, ever makes me feel small or stupid but always just encircled in his love and the holy spirit lives in me and leads and guides me and and the whole spiritual experience is a really beautiful one that i just keep saying to him i want to share that with everybody else i don't want to preach to people but i want your love to just flow through me and out and everybody to go what is that and can i have some and i go yes it's God and, and him or her, whatever you want to call him and whatever kind of relationship you want to have with him, standing right there with their arms open wide, waiting on you. So you just changed it to her. Did you feel like it was not necessarily sex, but just an energy? Just of, an energy. Of love? And it, just an energy of love. I mean, I needed a guy in my life because I did have women. They weren't really good friends, but I did have women. I needed a major figure of a man in my life because I wanted love. Mm. And God let me let me make him into my first boo that I hadn't had, you know, a really good boo in a while and he was a good boo. I mean hugs and rubs and you know. So when you were prayers. when you were passed out there and you kinda of went to the other side, you had an experience of God holding you like a you like a lover, him, like you... a friend, like a, a, a like his personal responsibility. And it didn't have to be. But it mm. felt like that. Like he wanted to take charge and let me know. God is love. God is love. I love you unconditionally. And were you raised with that understanding no, of God? No, I was raised that God was like, we was all sinners. We was born in sin. And sooner or later, we were going to go to hell because we didn't believe in God. And the only way to come to God was to believe in him and Jesus and confess your sins. And I did that. But the thing about that is, then you sin again. You know, you could confess that too, but do you start the whole process over? And I saw people doing that, just starting the whole process over. And I talked to him about everything that troubled me. I was like, I just want to be loved and, and I, I want to grow and I want, I want to be everything you want me to be, but I don't want to be beat up. Mm. And he told me, I don't want to beat you up. I love you. I love mankind unconditionally. He said, I'm responsible. I made mankind. I formed and shaped them. I don't want to beat anybody up. I want to love. I want to know. I want them to know how much I love them. Mm. And it just made me feel all gooey. And I'm like, you're my boo. Thank you. He's the yeah, but I'm God too. That's so beautiful. What are you most passionate about and why? This is going to sound silly, but I am most passionate about growing spiritually and getting to know God better and better and better every day. That's my, that's my goal to spend some time in meditation. And as I get into meditation, let it turn into prayer where I'm just sort of conversing with God about just the day and how it's a gorgeous day. And thank you for, again, for helping me to be alive, to experience this day and, and helping me to be all I can be so that I can help people 
love you like you love us. Here's something that I do every day in my meditation. I was talking to my friend Shishi about how I really wanted a, a, a man, a love, love interest in my life. And so that hasn't come to pass yet in reality. But in, in my world and in, in the world I live in every day, I try to treat every day like it's my love interest. And when I get up and it's a beautiful day like today, or even if we got, you know, a little bit of overhang, you always get that in LA. We call it June gloom, but it's all year round. I look for some breeze that touches my skin or some smell of, because LA, you do get the beautiful summer smell from the flowers. And jasmine is big out here. And I look for some some glint of sunlight dappling through the leaves or something that gives me pause so I can go and say that felt so good on my skin or look in the mirror and I love the way my hair is kind of glinting with the red and I go oh golly I look so cute today thank you for the hair color and just little things that feel like I couldn't have, couldn't have gotten a better answer or experience if I prayed about it so to hear to feel like God knows me enough to go deep in my mind and pick out little things and go that would please her that is one of the reasons I feel like he's kind of a fool because he can read my mind and pick out little things that will please me and, and keep me reinforcing how much I love him and that he's the most important whether I got a real boy or not he is important in my life and I want everyone to feel like that's good that's possible for them too Beautiful. So, having been so close to death, I mean, God brought me back and saved my life and gave me hope again, but I was very close to dying. And when I came back, I also was filled with hope and joy about that I could still achieve things in life that were important to me, like making a, a living and a name as a comedian and being more grateful about just everyday life, the fact that I was back, I was healthy, that I could share my story with others, and I have, and maybe it would impact their lives in as beautiful of a way as it has impacted mine. And whenever I'm given that opportunity, I find that it does, that people are open to hearing about a God that loves them, and a Holy Spirit that wants to lead and guide, and that you can still have your free will. No one's asking you to give it up. But at the same time, maybe you would let God help you guide that free will so you could be happy and satisfied and help others be happy and satisfied too. So mm -hmm. it's a process and I'm nowhere near the middle of it, even at the end. But it's something that has given joy to my life every single day. The fact that I know God, the fact that I'm alive. And guess what? Someday I'm going to be on TV telling jokes and cooking food and saying, hello. My name is Chief Cobb. <laughs>